Have we all accepted that every candy bar is the best version of itself? I'm gonna prove that wrong. Treaters, look at you! What are you, a, you That looks like shit. Happy Halloween. Aw, oh, you look so good. Speaking of looking good, I know I do. I dressed up like this just for you, and you should buy my book. It's the number one New York Times bestseller. How have you not gotten it yet? The link is in the description. I'm pretty sure it still has a large percentage off on Amazon, so go click that link, go get that book. I did this for you, all right? There's a dude walking behind you. <laughs> He's looking at us right now. He's literally stopped. <laughs> he does this, he goes, Did, uh, did he like what he saw? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to know. I'm pretty sure his dog did. I don't want to see any mommy comments. You got it? No mommy comments. As the various holidays come around and it's Halloween or whatever time that candy is consumed, there seems to be a candy time period, like a time capsule of candy. Why? Wow, this is, it is so bright. The sun is going up and down, or well, the clouds are in the way. That'd be really scary if the sun was going up and down. <laughs> anyway, Twix is one of my least favorite candy bars of all time. Sorry, I know a lot of people are gonna be upset about this. What do you want me to say? It's just too basic. Dry shortbread, caramel that has zero flavor, and of course, milk chocolate that is just liquid sugar. There's no depth of flavor. There's no excitement to it. That's, a, that's big talk. And we're gonna walk the walk. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? It's our first Walgreens trip. You know, they really could have worked on that logo there. Ah! The Washington Nationals. What does that have to do with Walgreens, Josh? Well, let's look at their logos. Who let that happen? Who let the dogs out? Mm -mm -mm. As seen on TV. I'm always super intrigued by what they have here. They're always so innovative. I hate this. <laughs> All right, well. So we've got, this is a, still a bag, isn't it? What would you class of oh, the wrapper, I guess? Well, aesthetically on the outside, I would say that this looks like a turd. With a Snickers bar, you have the vein. <laughs> we will talk about that another day. So this is probably my least favorite candy bar in the world. I already know what to expect, so let's just get this over with. Somehow worse than my expectations. I really don't want to eat this. I'm just gonna go spit it out. <clears throat> There's a little bit stuck on my tooth now all day. I'm gonna be like, it's cute for a dog, not for a person. Nobody wants that. Breakdown of this. Everything about this candy bar I hate. I don't know why. It's just dry shortbread. The caramel doesn't really taste like anything at all, but like sugar chew. And then the chocolate is just sweet fat. Not what you want, huh? Let's just get this over with, all right? We can do better though, to clarify. We're all having an argument about whether, why I spit out the Twix. Okay, I have to address this now because everyone's really upset about it. Let me clarify, Twix is bad, but not bad in the sense of not enjoyable. It is boring to me. That is my statement of the day. To be honest, this is one of the easiest candy bars I've ever made, so let's get to work here. First, we need our salt. Rassle yourself a large bowl and add two cups or 300 grams of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a cup or 100 grams of powdered sugar. Give them that whiskey business. Slap your knee. Then add one cup or 225 grams of salted butter that's been softened. Using a pastry cutter or two forks, cut that into the flour and just keep doing that until you get a crumbly shaggy dough. Then add one teaspoon or 10 grams of vanilla extract. Switch to a spatula and repeatedly fold that mixture together until you get a beautifully soft dough. Pow, look at that. No salt required because the butter is so now heavily spray a 9x13 baking dish with non-stick cooking spray, coat every god dang edge. Now you could lay parchment in here as pastry insurance, but uh, to be honest, I didn't really want to and you kind of don't have to. Anyway, press that there dough evenly into your baking dish until it evenly coats the even bottom. Did I mention you should spread it evenly? Then just pop that bad boy into an oven that's been preheated to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for 15 to 20 minutes or until very light golden and dry. Pull her out and cool completely before moving forward. Wow, look at that, magically cooled. Thanks, movie magic. <laughs> Moving on to caramel. Look, this is sort of a shortcut caramel, which I imagine is likely something like what these candy bar makers are doing. So a little traditional and a little, um, mass manufactured, if you will. In a medium sauce pot, wait, 
pause. We got a new sauce pot, all right? So uh, everybody just take a look at it and appreciate it, please. New sauce pot goofing. Anyway, add in one and a quarter cup or 195 grams of light brown sugar, one and a quarter cup or 370 grams of light corn syrup, 14 ounces or 400 grams of sweetened condensed milk, which I do have a homemade version for in my pumpkin pie recipe, should you desire to make your own. Yes, it's better. Link in the description. And finally, one cup or 227 grams of softened salted butter. I know, I know. Usually butter is added at the end, blah, blah, blah. Just trust me. We've got corn syrup in here, all right? That, that's that got nature-defying properties to it. Set the to medium heat and let it come to a rolling boil, stirring occasionally. Oh yeah, you also don't normally stir a caramel. We're just breaking all the rules today, look at that. Let that reduce until it reaches 235 degrees Fahrenheit. Cut off the heat, immediately stir in the beans from one vanilla bean pod. Make sure they get dispersed evenly, then immediately pour your hot caramel over your cooled shortbread. Let that cool completely uncovered, then cover with plastic wrap and chill in the fridge for at least two hours, but ideally overnight. Fast forward and it's solidified and ready to come out and join the rest of the world. Maybe it'll cuddle with me in bed or maybe I'll stop there, okay. Using a bed scraper or a sharp knife, run it around the edges until you've loosened your candy from the baking pan. See, this is why I probably should have put parchment in it to make it a little easier, but it's whatever. Carefully remove it and place it on a large cutting board. Look, portioning this can be a little challenging, but you know what? Life wouldn't be fun without a little challenge here and there. Using a sharp, clean knife, cut that into, well, Twix shaped bars, something like three and a half inches by one inch. I first started with one inch wide, long bars, and then cut those bars down into three and a half inch long segments. It's not rocket science, folks. Just make sure your knife is sharp for once. Please! It helps keep the shortbread mostly intact. Once you have your bars, and you'll have about as twice as many as you see here on this tray, you're now ready to coat in chocolat. The chocolat, it got the bars, makes me so funny. Look, you can't just use plain old melted chocolate. Well, you can, but it'll be ugly. You ideally want to use tempered chocolate. And I'll be honest, tempering chocolate is extremely annoying and it makes me want to run my body through a wall. And I imagine many of you will get impatient doing it. Oh, Josh, I messed up and it's your fault. To simplify, we use the same method in our Butterfinger video. <sighs> the stupid microwave version, which actually does work surprisingly well. You'll take 16 ounces or 450 grams of 60 to 70% cacao chocolate, very finely chop that and place in a heat proof glass bowl. Pop that in your microwave on high for 30 seconds, stir, hit it for another 30 seconds, stir again, hit it for 15 seconds, stir. Now at this point, you need to check the temp of the chocolate. Make sure it does not go above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's close, then keep gently stirring until it goes down a touch and then microwave it one last time for 10 more seconds, stir and it should be fully melted and just below 90 Fahrenheit. For all the chocolate confection people, is this the perfect way to do it? Absolutely not, not even close, but it is an easy solution for a decent chocolate coating. Anyway, to coat your chocolate, just dip your bars into the melted chocolate, coat thoroughly, remove with a fork, optionally drain on chopsticks and place on a silk pad. Then just top with smoked flaky salt for the flex. That's really it, honestly. You just let those cool until they're hardened, take them off the silk pad and trim those frilly edges so the bars are straight. And look at that. This isn't just some candy bar. This is a rectangular prism that brings a textural wonderland full of real flavor, raining joy down on the people that so choose to pick up this obelisk of flavor. Not really sure if this fits the term obelisk, but good Lord, slap my knee, throw my bed out the window, tie my leg to a horse and spank it. It's got that perfect caramel stretch. Now, let us taste test. Wow. This is what you want right here? Kendrick, no, you don't want it. It's okay. You're right. It is. Okay. Perfect ratio of caramel to shortbread. Literally equal parts. Equal. Does this look equal to you? I'm gonna cherish this moment just to point out that I'm literally always right about everything. All the time. I've never been wrong my entire life. Jokes aside, this is what Twix wants to be. This is how they ended up. Stomped on. A lot of you guys ask me to stomp on your neck. I'm not going to do that, but I will stomp on Twix's neck. Okay, so today we have a different taste tester. Kate? I'm not wearing the poop one. That's gross. I like Papa Kiss. So PC. All right, so do you like Twix, Kate? How do you feel about Twix? Um, I'm a big fan of Twix. Can you describe to me why you like Twix? Uh, I can't. <sighs> But I also like dark chocolate. She's the only one in this building besides myself that likes dark chocolate, and that's why you're here today. Is that correct? I think so. Taste test number one. Are you ready? Yes. There we go. Bite number one. This is really good. Cool, I like cool. this one. All right, that was number one. Now we're on to number two. Every time Kate taste tests, I don't ever know what to expect. <laughs> She's a wild card. Here's my take on this. Number one, it was very good, very soft. I felt like there was a lot more flavor. Number two, it was like not very good. Which one do you think the Twix was? Number two. Ugh. <laughs> It was just bland, you know? But I still like Twix. Kate, the lady, thank you so much. <laughs> you guys heard it here. Kate's one of the only ones that won't lie because everybody here has to get paid. What did we learn today? We learned that Twix is really just not that good, is it, Vikram? 
When it really comes down to it, you want to make something special that people will remember forever, you'll do this. Thank you. Ah! You want to know what else has long bars dipped in chocolate, ready to receive a gentle lick of the tongue and a gentle chew? <laughs> what am I saying? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our Twix. What did you expect? How did you expect this to go? We knocked it out of the park. They got absolutely stomped on. I can tell you for damn sure, if I'm making these, I'm not handing them out to the little brats coming to my door, all right? Sorry, kids, but I'm not making these for you. I'm, I'm probably gonna go buy Twix and give you those, but just be aware that you can make these for yourself. Munch on these and then hand out the other stuff to the kitties, all right? They don't care. They just want sugar. Oh, am I in heaven right now? We're just gonna roll with this. <laughs> We're gonna roll. Uh, anyway, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video, or you're going to learn something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.